Welcome in to Steelers Talk Yenzers. My name is Jack Sperry, and on today's show, we're going to be talking about Alex Highsmith because there's a report out there that the Steelers are getting close to getting a long-term extension done with the edge rusher, and then also Patrick Peterson. There's a report going around that he's playing a ton of nickel cornerback in practice right now. And then finally, who is Pittsburgh's most important offensive player heading into the 2023 season? Going to be breaking all these topics down for you here in just a second. But first, tomorrow night, we are going to be having our live coverage of the NBA draft on the Chat Sports main YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Coverage starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want a little bit of coverage to go along with uh, what you're watching on TV, some commentary from us here at Chat Sports, we have the best NBA draft coverage on YouTube live for you starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. All right, so now let's start with Alex Highsmith here and is an extension on its way. We've been waiting all offseason for a deal to get done after Alex had a 14 and a half sack season in 2022. And ESPN's Brooke Pryor came out with the report that a deal is getting close and it's going to be for less money than you potentially think. That's what Brooke had to say. Highsmith displayed his value in 2022 with a career best 14 and a half sacks. And the Steelers are optimistic about reviving a solid three-man outside linebacker rotation with the addition of Marcus Golden. Continues to say here, still the St Pittsburgh doesn't seem likely to shell out a huge contract for Highsmith. A four-year four deal in the neighborhood of $14 million per year would give him the fourth largest cap hit on the Steelers roster. Now, for any Steelers fan out there, this is fantastic news, okay? With the Pittsburgh Steelers already paying T.J. Watt the highest amount annually of any edge rusher in the league right now, being able to save a little bit on a guy like Alex Highsmith, who is an elite Robin, if I can quote Mike Tomlin, is fantastic. You take a look at the top 10 paid edge rushers in the National Football League right now, Alex Highsmith wouldn't even be in the top 10 right now if he was signed. And if it's a four-year deal, by the end of that deal, the Steelers are going to be getting a steal on somebody that could be a perennial all-pro edge rusher by the time he's done with that contract. Last year, Highsmith really came into his own. The missed tackle rate was a little bit higher for my liking, but he's still relatively young, and he really showed his ability to get after quarterbacks. Uh, I believe he was tied for 22nd in total pressures last year, 14 and a half sacks and 12 tackles for loss. He is very much an impact player. Whether or not TJ Watt is on or off the field, I think he's going to be a fantastic member of the Steelers long term. And the fact that the, he's willing to come back to Pittsburgh on $14 million or somewhere around that ballpark is a testament to Mike Tomlin and the culture that he has fostered here in Pittsburgh, okay? If it was just any other organization, right, Highsmith would be asking for that number one edge rusher type of money. But because he loves it here in Pittsburgh, because he loves playing with Cam Ayward and TJ Watt and all the players on Mike Tomlin's defense, and he loves Coach T and the environment that comes with being a part of this organization, he's willing to take less money and solidify this team as having one of the best pass rushes in the NFL for many, many years to come. So let me know what you guys think about Alex Highsmith down in the comments section. Is he worth the $14 million per season, or do you want to see him walk in NFL free agency next offseason? Type P if you would pay him, or type W if you would let him walk. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So here's what's going to happen. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. Take Take advantage of that time by answering today's pin question. Now let's shift to Patrick Peterson. And there's been a couple of reports lately that Pat Pete could be making a, a, a kind of a role change from what he's used to seeing in defenses around the league. So he's always been an outside cornerback that likes to play press, right? He's somebody that's always played on the outside. He's never played in the slot in his entire career in the NFL. Now that he's coming to Pittsburgh, Mike Tomlin and him have been talking for months about converting him to a nickel star corner, and I think that he's going to do a really nice job. Patrick Peterson, someone with some of the best instincts in the National Football League at the cornerback position still. He's not quite the athlete that he once was, but man, five interceptions last year, had the highest coverage grade from, P from PFF in his entire career last year. This guy can still ball, and I cannot wait to see what he does in the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, alongside some really stud rookies, in my opinion. Corey Trice Jr. has been lighting it up in OTAs. Same thing with Joey Porter Jr. 
here. I think Trice will probably sit the bench for a little bit uh, in favor of Levi Wallace to start the season. But Levi Wallace and Joey Porter Jr., they're outside corners only, okay? So when they're in their nickel packages and they have three corners on the field, Patrick Peterson is going to be kicking inside to that nickel star position where he's going to be allowed to roam and follow guys and really read the quarterback's eyes and just screw stuff up. For the, opposing, uh, for the opposing offense, which is exactly the role that I want to see him in. Now, the question is, will he thrive at this new position? Because we just simply don't know how he's going to make this adjustment. He's been an outside corner his entire career. So is he really going to uh, come in here? And can Mike Tomlin teach this old dog a new trick here by kicking inside? I certainly think that it's possible. Patrick Peterson, like I said, has plays with great instincts. He's got great ball skills as well to intercept passes. I think that he was born to play this position in Mike Tomlin's defense. I think he's going to be a key role, or he's going to play a key role in an elite defense this year. So before I go over the rest of today's news and rumors surrounding the black and gold, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, because if you've already made it this far into the video, we must be doing something right. So go ahead, join the family right now. we got videos on here for free every single day on the Steelers. So if you want to become an expert on your Steelers, go ahead and click that subscribe button for me right now. So my take on Patrick Peterson here is that it worries me a little bit that he is going into this year playing a position uh, that he hasn't really played before. And that's nickel cornerback playing a nickel star position uh, where he's going to be allowed to roam. He's not going to be in man coverage like he has been throughout his entire career. It's definitely going to be something new, but I am very excited to see what Mike Tomlin sees in Patrick Peterson because he called him up and said, hey man, we want you on the team, but maybe not in the role that you're used to playing. It seems like Pat Pete is definitely excited about this new role. Uh, his teammates are saying uh, how well he's performing in practices. I am so excited to see what the secondary looks like with Patrick Peterson leading the way from that nickel star position. So now let's talk a little bit about the player that I think is going to be the engine of the Steelers offense in 2023. And that player is none other than running back Najee Harris. Now there's a lot of people that don't necessarily believe in Najee Harris out there in the Steelers fandom. And you know, they have some reasons for that. You know, he's gotten hurt a couple of times, right? He dealt with a foot injury last year, but Matt Canada has made it abundantly clear. Najee Harris in this run game, uh, along with Jalen Warren as well, is going to be the focus of the offense this year. Early downs, the Steelers are going to be running the football a lot, and the reason for that is that that's what they did at the end of last season, and they finished with a 6-1 and one record, and that one loss to the Ravens should have been a W. Let's just plain and simply call it what it is. Mitchell Trubisky doesn't throw three interceptions in that game. They likely finished the season 7-0, and behind the back of Najee Harris and this run game. And I really do think that Harris is primed now, going into his third season in the NFL to have a breakout season as the bell cow of this offense, get a ton of production. Last year, 272 carries. The average is not exactly what you want to see, right, with a 3.8. That's not fantastic. And just 60.8 yards per game and 10 touchdowns total. So he had seven rushing and then three receiving as well. And, you know, Najee definitely needs to turn it up a notch from those numbers here in 2023. But remember, he was dealing with an injury for a, major for a large part of that 2022 season. And then also part of it, I think, is scheme. Canada's run scheme is extremely, extremely vanilla. And he needs to kind of switch things up and tailor it more to the talents of Najee Harris. If you take a look at the run game splits for the Pittsburgh Steelers, last year okay so outside zone 21 percent of the time all right so that's about league average then you look at inside zone and duo 33 and 14 percent there duo and inside zone very similar run schemes if you combine those two that's 47 percent of all runs were inside zone and duo and that's about as basic as it gets guys then power just 1% of the time they ran power last year. That's tied for 31st in the league. Counter, another power scheme, not doing that much as well. And then draw, they were eighth in the league at 4%. Uh, and then pin and pull, another power run scheme, 6%, which is about league average. And then jet sweeps, not at sweeps, jet sweeps. Sorry about the typo there. That is first in the National Football League at 10%, and that is double the next number. So Matt Canada absolutely loves the jet sweeps. He needs to get over that. And he needs to start, I think, incorporating some more of these power run schemes, these counters, uh, pin and pull, trap, all these different types of power run schemes because he really didn't do that uh, last year. It was mostly inside zone, mostly duo, and that's super vanilla. 
okay, out of shotgun, running duo, running inside zone. It's about as basic as NFL run games get, and that's what the Steelers were running a majority of the time. And then if somebody was coming across in motion, defenses knew it was a jet sweep because Matt Canada freaking loved that. So I think that Najee Harris being as big as he is, being as explosive as he is, he needs to be in more of a power gap scheme that really utilizes his strength, utilizes his power. And right now, Matt Canada just didn't do that in 2022. So I'd be lying if I was a little bit worried that Matt Canada, who's been saying all offseason that the offense is so similar to what it was last year, we're going to prioritize the run like we did last year. Part of me thinks that they're just going to continue to roll with this inside zone duo type of run scheme, and it's going to be super vanilla again when I want to see more power schemes run within, within this run game because I think that's what Najee Harris does really well. Jalen Warren put on a bunch of poundage uh, in muscle this offseason. Both of these guys can operate a gap power run scheme. That's what Matt Canada needs to transition to this year. If he doesn't, it's looking like those numbers might continue to dwindle for the former first round pick, Najee Harris. So will the Steelers have a top 10 run game in 2023? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section by giving me a yes or by giving me a no. So now before we go, we do have some sad news here in Steelers Nation. Uh, former Steelers linebacker Clark Hagens uh, has unfortunately passed away at the age of 46. Uh, he was a part of that 2006 Super Bowl championship team under Bill Cowher. Uh, and, you know, it just, it just really does suck to see somebody that was, that was really uh, a, a, an impact player for that Steelers defense that year. Spam 53 uh, down in the comment section to show some love. Uh, rest in peace, Clark Hagens. We're going to miss you, man. All right, that's going to be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all the support. And until next time, here we go, Steelers.